Greetings! This little video is going to show you what's inside this old Panasonic TV. It's, well I say old, it's, um, it's about five or six years old. It's one of the last of the CRT sets that Panasonic did before they flipped over to LCD and plasma completely. But I was watching a film on it late last night and all was going well then all of a sudden there was a little tick and the picture went all to pot and the sound, well there was a ringing noise you'll hear what I mean now when I start it up now and you can see the pictures like that went to AV it's all blurred, over scanned and you some crackling as well. I'll knock that back off. Now there wasn't a bang, it was just a little little snap. Something, whatever's gone in it, I think it's something small. Of course that means it's going to be like a needle in a haystack trying to find it. I've got a copy of the circuit diagrams for this set's immediate predecessor. This is the Panasonic TX32 PD50. I've got the diagrams for the PD30, which looks identical, but this is a slightly upgraded version. Anyway, let's get the back off that thing, which is going to be fun, seeing as I broke my arm a few weeks back. And that's a 10 stone set, but I should be able to drag it around to the point where I can get the back off and see what's inside. Now, before I take the back off, I'm just going to give you a little rundown of what's on the rear of this. Obviously, British television owners and in fact most of the European television owners will recognize these sockets they won't recognize those um, people in the States will recognize those sockets and those sockets they won't recognize these uh, Australian they probably got them all as well I'm not sure but what we've got here is, is an antenna connection which it's similar to an F connector but it actually pushes straight in I think it's a Belling Lee connector, I think it's known as. Then we've got these, which are SCART connectors. They're 21 pins. Some of them, they all contain audio signals and a few switching signals, like pin 8, for example, will call the television over to watch what's on the, the SCART socket. Um, if it's 5 volts on pin 8, they'll go widescreen. If it's 12 volts, they'll go normal, 4 to 3. And there's also pin 16 on some of them, which will switch on RGB mode. This one and this one in this case also have RGB capability. So it will use the video signal for sync and the RGB signals for a much sharper picture. Also, these ones in this case also have the S-video connection on them. Where they'll use, um, I think they'll use the sync plus one of the colour pins, or it may be used the two, two colour pins, I can't remember, for S-Video, like the four pin DIN connect, uh, connections, excuse the dust, um, like the four pin mini DIN connections, but they can be fed in on these. This one is unusual for a uh, British CRT set, certainly, and it's actually a component input. I've got several of these Panasonic CRTs, the big old CRTs and the this is the only one I've got which has got the the component inputs as well and what that does then uses the audio from here with the component input it's not high def it'll handle 480 or 576 and that's it I think it, it will do progressive scan on that which is more than these can do these are normally uh, 480 or 576 interlaced connection they won't do progressive scan and this one on here is actually an audio output connector so you can feed stereo audio straight into an amplifier there's no Dolby Pro Logic on this one it's got uh, Dolby Virtual Surround but there's no Pro Logic anyway let's get the lid off you're probably wondering what you're looking at here that's actually inside the tube it's part of the I think it's part of the shadow mask assembly if I zoom out inside the tube. Very strange. Here's the tube from another angle and here are the boards. 
bit hard to see from this angle, but that's actually two boards. The one closest to us here is all the low voltage side. And in fact we've got the, the brains of the outfit just on that little board there. And the board at the back then is all the the heavy stuff, the main power supply, all the EHT and scan coil power stuff, all that sort of thing. So we've got a conventional if a bit busy tube neck and a few other boards here. Interesting to notice on this as well that there are no little button magnets or anything like that around there. I was expecting to see some sort of magnets for adjusting the convergence especially on a large set like this and in particular because this corner down here isn't converged properly and you can't adjust it correctly in the service menu. Whether I'd be able to tweak that by putting button magnets somewhere along here I don't know. The first things first, gotta get the bloody thing working. I suspect an issue over with that board. To access the boards, you just lift and the whole thing releases to bring it further back for service. There's a better look at the power supply board. You can just about make out that thick white line down there. Everything over this side of the white line is all mains, directly connected to the mains. All this side is isolated from the mains. So that's what that transformer there does. That's main, one of the main parts of the power supply. Obviously essential for mains isolation because we've got all these AV inputs on the back. A quick nosy on the underside of the boards shows that the logic board as I'd ex expect is double sided, it's got a few chips and whatnot on the underside but the big heavy power board doesn't have any components on the bottom it's a bit easier to, to troubleshoot because there's nothing on the bottom to try and figure out it's all top side, hopefully there's something on there that's obviously burnt out I've got the circuit diagrams anyway Noticed when looking up under the board that some of the solder connections are looking pretty grotty. Now some of them look grotty because they're actually through hole tag because big uh, big insert, and particularly for some of the big components, these inserts and then the, the the component legs are soldered through them. But some of them just look pretty nasty. Now they might be they might be good, it's just that they're done in lead free solder which in my opinion always looks nasty or there could be some dry joints on you. Now I know there was an issue with this screen when it was cold the, um, there'd be some banding on the screen and it wouldn't be mains frequency or anything like that and it would wander, you get sometimes be thin horizontal bands and then they get thicker and wander to vertical and then after about two minutes they clear. So there may be some dodgy connections on here and if I solder up as many as I can see it may fix that problem. More importantly it may fix the, the problem we've got now. Well I was hoping for a nice easy fix on this TV. Uh, no such luck. I've resoldered all of the dodgy looking solder connections on the bottom of the power supply board and I've also tested all of the resistors with a meter. They all check out fine, which means I think there's a problem either with one of the capacitors or one of the semiconductors on the board. Furthermore, I think one of the regulator circuits is packed in because it sounds like some of the voltages have gone too high, it's crackling. And the last thing I want to do is start poking and prodding around in there when it sounds like it's about to go bang, as you'll hear when I switch it on. Like I said, it doesn't sound too healthy. I think it's worth getting it professionally repaired because I mean it's only a big old CRT, it's not high def. Because of their weight you'll pick them up for peanuts. I saw one of these go on eBay last week for I think it was £10.50. It's not worth bothering with.
had it been a normal CRT tube, I'd probably be tempted now to take the tube out and cut off the rim band, take it somewhere remote and pop it. Because a 32 inch screen is going to go off with a hell of a bang. But because it's got that strange contraption, if you like, inside the tube, and because it's a flat face tube, I want to break it in a more controlled manner. I do literally want to open it carefully, just to find out a bit more about what's inside it. So, without further ado, let's have a look. Quite a nice subwoofer assembly, taken from inside the back cover. Another thing I've noticed is, if you look on the back of the tube, it looks like it's got lots of degaussing coils. You might think, this is the degaussing coil, it's not. This is the degaussing coil, which goes around along the top and loops back around. This one and this little one are for, I believe, the convergence adjustments. Hence the lack of little magnets everywhere, it's all done electronically using these coils. These actually came from the, they connected to the, one of the computer boards rather than the power side. The degaussing coil is fed from the power supply board. Right, let's see if I can gently pop this. Yep. Now you can see from a different angle that mounting point which you could see through the side of the tube earlier on. So we get in there. Because I've degassed it first, the front of the screen is actually still intact. Now this is why I degassed it first. When you smash these things up, you'll get all sorts of shards of glass. Like that. Big pieces like that. Or razor sharp pieces like that. Here's one of the corners that that frame was mounted on. You can also you can see how thick the glass gets at this point as well. Here's what was mounted on the inside. Very fine bit shadow mask. A little bit of damage there which I think was from when I was slamming this pipe, this pipe through to try and break it up. And over here, that's the back of the glass itself. There's a foil backing just beyond that, then we've got the phosphors, and beyond that we have the glass. These are the bits which I nearly forgot to show you. That's the electron gun. And this is the deflection yoke. Between those red wires and the blue wires, when this set's operating, it's about 1400 volts. So you certainly wouldn't want to mess with it. It's surprising how heavy that TV is now, even without all the bits and pieces. I mean, all you're seeing now is the case and the glass front of the tube, which means the glass must be pretty thick. Yep, pretty thick. And around the edges, even thicker. <laughs> 